Hello there you gorgeous gamers and welcome back to Pure Play TV for another video review. And in this one we're looking at Windfolk, a recent release for PS4 and PS5, though all footage was captured on PS5 and a review code was provided by the publisher. This video is brought to you by our network sites pureplaystation.com, check them out. Windfolk sucked me in from the beginning with its colourful world, easy flying and generally charming presentation. It lost me soon after though, but there's definitely potential. Windfolk puts you in the jetpack of a young lady called Essen, who is a rebellious type, always breaking the rules. The world is split between the goodies and the baddies, and the fight is over a natural resource called Tridian. The baddies want it, you've got to protect it. Simple, and honestly, that's about as deep as the story goes. You begin with a short tutorial to show you the ropes of flight and combat, and I was initially quite excited. Flying was fun and it reminded me of playing the Harry Potter games on the PS1 as you have to fly through rings in a set course. Combat on the other side was a bit of a letdown. You have a really large reticule and the idea is that the closer to the centre your target is, the more damage you will do. Enemies can still be within the circle and receive damage, but at a lower rate. On the one hand, this really simplifies the combat, which means you won't be stressing. On the other, it's a little too simple, and combat encounters can boil down to holding R2 and spamming the dodge button when needed. It's not very satisfying then, and it's certainly an area that could be improved upon if this weird little game were to get a sequel. Windfolk is a game of two halves. One half is the story mode, which takes you through eight missions that aren't all that exciting. It's more of the same after the third level, and it's marred by repetition, though the flying around is really fun. The other half is the challenge mode, which gives you some short missions to complete, ranging from flight courses to battle arenas. Needless to say, I enjoyed the flight courses a lot, but I found the combat arenas to be less than stellar, with the game's overly simplified combat. There are a few oddities with Windfolk 2. The game comes from Spanish developer Fractal Fall, and some of the Spanish has slipped into the English version of the game. That's not a problem, mind you, but it's just weird to see the leaving the mission area warning in Spanish, and perhaps suggests a lack of polish that would have been afforded to a bigger Sony release. Because make no mistake, this is a Sony published PlayStation exclusive, after all, and one would expect a little bit more polish, even if it's not a first party studio producing the game. I had high hopes for Windfolk, and they've only been half map. The game's world is bright and colourful, and that's something I'm always a fan of, and the flying mechanics are really good too. Unfortunately, the boring story, the boring voice acting, and the boring combat let it down massively. And that's the end of this review. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. If you did, please do us a favour and go down below, hit the like and subscribe buttons, and don't forget the bell icon too, so that you're notified whenever we have new stuff. I've been Chris, you've been gorgeous, and I'll see you on the next one. Until then, until then, bye bye.